Welcome to the second installment of our Black History Month edition of 10 Questions with NBC10 Boston. I am Kwani Lunas, and this week's guest is the owner and founder of The Urban Grape, TJ Douglas. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Kwani. Happy to be here. And we were talking about how beautiful the weather is today. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on here in Boston. We don't want any more snow. I know it's still winter, but goodness. <laughs> You know, my, uh, my my kids are a little bit older now, so now I can kind of push them out, lock the door, make them shovel. Um, so, <laughs> At least they're not trying to, like, make snowflakes and they're being useful, which is what you yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to have them go out there and make some money with our neighbors, but. Right. You know. <laughs> That's what it is. So you're a businessman, which brings us to the Urban Grape. How did you think of that concept and what sparked you to actually go forward with the idea? Yeah, well, um, the, the kind of quick uh, version of the story is uh, I was living in Vermont when I was uh, 14 years old as a dishwasher, and that was really my entrance into hospitality and, and the food industry. Uh, I moved to Boston in uh, 2000, and I ended up uh, working for a few restaurants, worked for Todd English, worked for the Aquitaine Restaurant Group, uh, ran a few restaurants. And uh, when I was there, I had a very seasonal staff at one of my restaurants. And so I taught them uh, how to drink wine in a progressive format. Uh, and I wrote a wine list from light body to full body. And uh, when my wife Hadley and I started having uh, kids, having babies, uh, I wanted to get out of the restaurant side and uh, worked some time for supplier selling. And then we opened up uh, the Urban Grape in 2010. And I wanted to take the concept of our progressive scale, uh, drinking by the body of the wine as opposed to geographical region or by grape varietal and uh, put that in a retail setting, which no one has, uh, you know, has done on the planet. <laughs> I think some people are trying to do it, uh, but we're, we're unique in that sense. And it's, uh, it's a great way to kind of, you know, even the playing field uh, for everyone uh, to have access and really learn how to drink progressively. And I may be getting ahead of myself, but it is Black History Month and we are talking about diversity, especially within the world of hospitality and especially wine. When you first started, what was that process like when you realized that there weren't too many people that looked like you in the industry? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 let's see, it's almost 25 years now that I've been on this side of the business. And, you know, I'm still, um, you know, unique in, in that sense of, uh, you know, being one of the only ones on a, on a wine trip, you know, pre-COVID, of course, uh, being one of the, uh, the only ones in, uh, you know, in a room or, you know, at a winery. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, for be, being a black man, you know, growing up in Connecticut and Vermont and now, now in Boston, uh, you know, we have we have our layers of, of protection. Uh, and, uh, you know, this year in particular, uh, especially, uh, you know, post uh, George Floyd and uh, Black Lives Matter uh, protests uh, around the world, uh, it's really made me take uh, an inner look uh, at myself, but also because there's so much uh, people, so many people looking at me as a black business owner, as a black man, where before it was just like, oh, that's just TJ, or oh, that's just a wine shop. And so it's really um, making me uh, not focus, but really uh, be able to express my, my black joy that, that, that I have, you know? Uh, and it's, uh, it's great. And so, you know, you, I don't want to jump ahead, but we created the the Urban Grape Wine Studies Award for Students of Color. Uh, and what this, uh, what this is doing, it's, it's allowing education at Boston University uh, and more of like an award scholarship uh, way. And then uh, paid internships at uh, three sides of the business that I've worked on, uh, retail, uh, wholesale, and then on the restaurant side to get more brown and black faces uh, in front of buyers, sellers. And then in my industry, the most important person is the, is the wine drinker, the customer. So, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to see some changes. We have two students in the program right now and uh, it's going great. But what we've also seen is that, you know, there's people are really elevating voices uh, around, around the country in the wine industry and around the globe. We're seeing some, some pretty amazing stuff come out of South Africa right now um, with uh, black and brown producers out there, as opposed to just working in the vineyard. Now they're working in the winery. So, I don't want to jump too far ahead of your questions. I know oh. we have, have we even had 10 questions yet or is this still the first one? I, I think we're at three or two. You know what's funny? I'm going to tell you a little secret. I sound like a fraud, but I don't think I ever ask only 10 or sometimes it may be well for the other conversation. <laughs> but you did mention your wine studies program. It is in its inaugural phase. What was the process like of planning and being very intentional about the people that you have included in that program? Yeah, that's a great, I, I like the way that you asked that. Um, 
you know, just from my experience uh, when I was in the restaurant industry and then also, uh, you know, fast forward to uh, 2010, uh, opening up the Urban Grape, uh, there weren't any black applicants that were, you know, applying for floor position or managerial uh, positions, uh, really, like uh, up, up until recent times. And I needed a, a, a pool of people that, that look like me, uh, that maybe have grown up in uh, areas or had similar experiences to me, also applying. And uh, Hadley and I realized that, you know, if people aren't applying, maybe they, they think that the wine industry or hospitality is not for them. Maybe it's not in their neighborhood or, you know, maybe they don't have wine on their table growing up. And uh, so we need to create, you know, where everyone's using the word access, but we need to create a path. Uh, for for people to come in and see that you know the wine industry is an amazing place and it and it allows you to travel the globe and, and meet people that you know that you would never normally meet because I really think that wine brings people t t together in this sense um, the the intentional path we want to do is that you know you can't just hire someone bring them into the store because the level of service and education that that my staff and I provide at the Urban Grape uh, is is really top notch and you know you have to have experience in wine and hospitality to work at the urban grape. But if you are applying and you don't have experience and I'm not going to hire you, then that's not going to make our company more diverse if I don't have you in. So we need to start with education. And so the education side uh, will give people the, the exactly what it is education, but I'm also not going to hire a lot of people unless they also have experience. And so we're providing the education on one side with Boston University, and then we're doing the paid internship experiences um, at retail at the Urban Grape, a uh, wholesale a great uh, distributor called uh, MS Walker, and then Tiffany Faison, uh, amazing woman uh, and uh, great restaurateur here in Boston. She's and they're doing. Was on this Go ahead. program. She's a love of yeah. our series. <laughs> she, she's she's fantastic. Yes. You know, just like so many of our of our friends uh, in, in Boston with with restaurants that depend on that for themselves and their staffs. You know, our our hearts go out to them, and you know, we want to help support them. And we're doing like pop ups at the store, but anyways, that's 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 something else. And uh, you know, when these when these students come through this program, which would take about a year, they're not only going to come out with the education, they're also going to come out with it, with experience. And then after that, they have a lifelong uh, um, mentorship with myself, uh, with Tiffany, and with some of the upper management and owners at MS Walker. And we've raised, since this program started in June, we've raised about $175,000. And at $200,000, uh, the fund actually is endowed uh, or will be endowed. And it will put two students through this program in perpetuity. And so it's not a one-time thing. And that was very intentional that if we're gonna do this, it couldn't just be a, a one-time thing, you know? Uh, it took about uh, 18 months for us to get this, pro uh, this, this whole project going. Um, and a big part of it was we, you know, we're a small business, we're entrepreneurs, you know, it's just my wife and I, uh, and we needed the, the cash in order to fund this award. But um, we came up with the idea about five years ago when I just got tired of, you know, not seeing people apply that I want to have apply. The lack of diversity aside, when was the first time that you saw yourself in the wine industry and just knew that you belonged? Uh, God, that's another great question. Um, where I really belonged, I mean, I've, I've, when I moved to Boston, uh, I didn't really have anyone to, to guide me or mentor me. Uh, I didn't have money to take the, you know, the more traditional like sommelier route. Um, and I, I needed to work, right? I was, I was constantly, you know, working 78 hours a week in the restaurant side. And so I had to really create my, my own path. So I made myself uh, comfortable uh, when I started learning about wine in, I'd say, probably 2001. And I made myself comfortable. And the more wine that I tasted, the more winemakers and, and sommeliers that, I, I, that I've met and become friends with over the years, uh, the more educated I become because I ask them questions. I taste with them. You know, that's the great thing about wine. You can know, you know, a million things, but there's a billion things that you don't know. Uh, and that's the, you know, it's, it's continuous, continuous learning in this, in this world. Um, but the wine industry is fantastic because it really allows you to travel. Like I've, I've been to, you know, South Africa, Argentina, Chile, California, you know, Portugal, and all these great places that if I wasn't in wine, 
uh, and hospitality. I don't know if I would ever have gone there or ever thought that it was there. So I've made myself comfortable. There have been definitely uncomfortable situations over the over the years, uh, on, sometimes on a daily basis or a weekly basis. Um, but again, you know that that thick layer that we have to have. Um, you know, it's gotten to me. It's gotten me to where I am now, and I'm really excited of where I'm going to go. And that's that. That's that black joy that uh, you know. I'm just. I feel like I'm projecting. I even got my uh, my, 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 my 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 Martin S. I love it. <laughs> that is so. Cute. I love that shirt. You got to drop the link. Thank you. Thank you. Later on, <laughs> but you talked about the places that you've been able to go as a result of working in the wine industry. What is the most memorable place that you visit, visited? Yeah, uh, I've been to Italy more times than I've been to California, that makes and sense. I'd say the the most memorable place that I've been, which had wine. Uh, we were staying in uh, Umbria, so kind of geographically dead center of Italy, east of Tuscany. And uh, Hadley asked me, uh, you know, we we're many bottles deep. Uh, she was actually pregnant at the time. We didn't know. And uh, she said, hey, T, like, you know, what's your five-year plan? And I basically, like, you know, threw, threw it down on the table. I'm like, I want to do this. I want to open up a wine store. I want to call it Il Tabolo, the table, because it brings people together. Um, and I want to do it in, in our, you know, in our progressive format by body on a scale of of one to 10, and I want to bring my hospitality background into retail, which I felt was missing. And, uh, and so that was probably the most memorable experience hmm. in terms of being wine country was the idea and really the, the, the birth of, uh, of the urban grape and the progressive scale concept. Uh, one of the coolest places, uh, I mean, I've been to South Africa a few times. I think that's one of the most exciting uh, places. Uh, you know, they've been growing grapes there for you know, 500 plus years. But they have really only been, uh, I think, making a lot of great quality wine uh, post-apartheid because it's allowed people uh, of color that ha that were born and raised in South Africa to leave and go get educated and, you know, California and France and, and work in other wineries. But it also allowed, when apartheid ended, for educators to come into South Africa. And so they've been growing grapes for hundreds of years there. But I look at it as really a, a new wine culture, and it's um, it's really a beautiful place. Uh, and then I guess this is the, the another exciting place. I was in uh, Chile and Argentina, I think two years ago, and uh, it was one of the scariest places I've been because I'm I'm a big guy. But uh, years ago, I, when I was a kid, I fell off of a horse, and uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of freaked out of things bigger than me, mm. and uh, and I'm not a huge horse fan. And we rode uh, horses uh, in the Andes uh, and did about 3,000 vertical feet and ended at about, I think, nine or 10,000 feet. So here I am, a couple, couple glasses of wine in me, oh, no. on the back of a horse, you know, 30, 30, 30 hours away from home. And, uh, you know, it really got me there. And I, you know, I, I, uh, I conquered a fear and I got rewarded with uh, a great glass of Cabernet Franc at the very end. And, you know, and that, you didn't <laughs> and I didn't fall off and that calmed the shakes. <laughs> I love that. And you also got to travel before travel essentially got shut down, yeah. which is a really cool part for you because now you can say you've seen the world, unlike mm -hmm. most of us. <laughs> and, you know, all, all the great thing about wine is no matter where you go, um, you know, it's, it's cultural. You know, there's a different culture in Napa than there is in Sonoma, right? But it's all, it's all California. But there's, there's a different culture. There's a different vibe, right? Um, there's a different vibe in, you know, Portugal than there is from, you know, Barcelona. And, and it's, it's such an amazing thing. And I feel that, you know, you can only get so much from, from reading and memorizing, you know, but the moment that you stand on the soil, touch a grape, meet the winemaker, eat that food that that wine is made to go with, you're like, oh, I get it, you yeah. know, and it just, it gets you to want to wanting more. So since you've done all of these things already within the wine world, what is a natural next step for you? You've traveled, you have your wine shop. What would that natural next step be? Yeah, um, well, <laughs> I feel like I'm a serial entrepreneur from you know the baseball card shop and the, the, the lawn mowing business and the wood stacking business and the cleaning business that I had all before the, you know, the age of 16 years old. You know, I feel that there's always going to be something um, you know, Urban Grape has given us uh, a, a great platform, and really, this last year we've we've gotten I feel some 
some deserved national um, attention and, and recognition. And, uh, you know, I, we really want to kind of hold, hold this where it is right now and grow from here. Um, you know, a hard decision was selling our first store uh, in 2015 uh, when we had our second store, our current store that opened up in 12. And it was a hard decision. And the night that Hadley and I um, signed the PNS, we said we should have done this two years ago. Right. And that selling of that store, which was just brick and mortar, allowed us to create a website, create urban affairs, our education side of the business, create uh, urban seller, my consultation side of the business, and our, it allowed us to create our delivery business. And so just that one change allowed our, 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 our brand and our business to absolutely blow up. So we want to see like, like what's next. You know, I don't know if I, you know, I don't know if I ever want to like be a winemaker, you know, I like selling and talking and eating and drinking and pairing, but I don't know if I need to, you know, get my hands dirty like that, but I want to know all of that stuff. So what's really next for us is I, I want to travel to places that I haven't been yet. I really want to include my family. Uh, I think New Zealand's on there for me. That should be a fun one. Yeah. I know you talked about this a lot in the media, but I do want to get your perspective as well. Last year, your company was one of the stores that were vandalized after the protests. Mm -hmm. What was that, that week, month period like when you're watching people essentially <laughs> protest for Black lives, but also then you see it, it looks as though you get attacked, even though you know Black community did come out and support afterwards. What, what was that roller coaster of emotion like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, we've, we've had the COVID pivot, but we've also had like the Black Lives Matter and then support your local black owned business yeah. pivot, right? Like it was all new. People heard about us uh, that had never heard about us before, right? They read about us maybe in the New York Times and they're like, oh, I didn't know that was a wine shop there. I didn't know it was a woman owned business. I didn't know it was a black owned business. So let's let's support them. And you know, I'm, I'm confident that that the services uh, and the products that we provide to our community, you know, once there's a saying in our in our in our business when we're selling wine to like a sommelier or, or a retailer, if you were a salesperson of, you know what, just get it in the glass, right? Mm -hmm. If you can get them to take a sip and understand it, then they'll buy it, right? So once you get a sip of the urban grape, you'll be able to be, you know, hopefully be a, a customer and a client for life. That that pivot into all of that support it was really overwhelming. You know, I mean, our, our, our sales on June 1st, um, which was the, 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 the morning uh, after our, our stores vandalized, uh, we had our busiest uh, sales day uh, as a 10 year old company. Like June 1st was busier than Christmas Eve. And it was insane. It was just so much community support and, you know, new customers, old customers, people that might not have shopped with us in a while, maybe because they moved and they weren't, you know, it wasn't convenient them to, to physically be here. And getting all of that, that love and support was, was overwhelming. And I really had to kind of, you know, take it in and say, okay, step back and, 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 you know, and breathe on this and think about how, how, how I feel that what I'm doing is, important to not wine community, right? Cause then it's only just, it's just wine, but, but being a, a black man, uh, and I feel that I'm successful on many levels uh, in this industry and in other industries, and then being um, that successful person to, to like, to my kids, right? That I'm a successful dad with a good heart and I'm a successful husband, you know, with a good heart and a great smile, right? Like, and, you know, getting, getting all of that emotion, um, it was emotion that I, that I really never had before. Um, and, you know, there were a lot of people asking me two questions. One was, you know, how is it being black and white industry? I'm like, well, I've been black and white industry for 20 years. Right. <laughs> you know, you're, you're asking me now and I'm going to give you that answer because I'm going to take the opportunity for you to hear my answer. But then there's the other part. And this was the upsetting part that so many people were like, hey, man, I'm, I'm sorry about your window you know, or how much did they take? And I'm like, whatever, like it, it wasn't about the window. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, we had a, we had a great, um, uh, Instagram post the, the, the morning, the morning of, uh, when we started getting these, you know, we're sorry about your broken window. We're sorry broken, about your broken window. We're like, you know, a, a window is not a life, right. you know, a window is not a life. This is not about the window. This window is actually going to do good. And I'm, I'm in my dining room right now, but if you can see, 
ah, tripping over my Instagram light. So you see that right there? So it's a big plywood board and it says community. So wow. that was covering our window in the store okay. um, for, I don't know, probably about three months. And mm -hmm. it was a local artist, uh, Curtis. And you can see the broken glass in with it. the hearts coming out of it, right? So that broken window allowed us to pivot how we think of the Urban Grape and yeah. how we can use our platform to do good for all mm. on that. So, um, but man, it's been um, emotional. And uh, yeah, I've, I've learned a lot about myself. I could imagine. And that piece of art is definitely something that I, I love that it's right near there in your living room or dining room, because you can constantly look to, to it for that inspiration and a reminder of how far you've come as well. Every day. I, and you are a trailblazer in the Boston wine community, so to speak, whether you want to admit it or not. So <laughs> my, <laughs> my question to you is, how do you hope your work will be remembered in future Black History Months? It doesn't have to be like in five years, but, you know, moving forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's another great question. So I, I would say I like my work and, and, and the work of, of my wife and the work of our, of our staff um, to know that we're, that we're doing this, you know, it's, it's, we're, you know, we're more than a wine shop, mm -hmm. you know, um, we, we are community and in our mission statement that we wrote 12 years ago is that we want to help take the intimidation out of wine, hence the progressive scale, but we want to help build community through beverage. And we want to be known as a staple where, where people have, have, have come to learn about wine. Maybe some have worked here. And then they take that experience and they and they do whatever they want with it and bring it around the world. Um, I want to make our beverage industry not just here in Boston but globally um, more accessible to everyone. You know, I mean, wine. You think it's a very a, a kind of elite uh, experience, but it's only because it's marketed that way. Yeah. You know, and you know, I mean, peasants and you know, back in the day in, in Europe, they they made their own wine and they drank. You know, like it was just part of their lifestyle. Um, I want people to remember Urban Grape and drinking progressively and TJ and Hadley Douglas as, uh, as people that were just, you know, great community members, you know, and made sure to, 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 you know, keep a smile on when we need to keep a smile on, but talk about the hard stuff when people needed to hear the, you know, the hard stuff and always have a, you know, a great glass of wine with you, you know, and, Maybe uh, that answer is going to change in six months. Sure. Maybe it's going to change in five years. Um, but for right now, I just want to you know keep on smiling and keep on drinking. And you do mention that wine is an experience that anyone should be able to partake in. And Valentine's Day is around the corner. Mm -hmm. So for someone who knows nothing about wine but wants to start to dabble into the wine world, what are maybe one mm -hmm. or two suggestions that you tell them to start with? Yeah, um, you know, I would actually say uh, start with something inexpensive. You know, there's a difference between inexpensive and cheap. Um, you know, so at the Urban Grape, you're always going to find a sound product um, at, in every single price point. So one is that whatever you're going to buy it does not have to be expensive. Okay. Um, the second part of that is always ask questions uh, of, of of the person that's selling it to you. Right. So we have a great text line. Hey, I'm new to drinking wine. I want to get something special for my partner. I have $15. What should you drink or what should I drink? Most stores will say, oh, here, have this. But there's no dialogue. Right. Well, I'm having spicy food and we're finishing with chocolate. Great. Try this bruchetto, which is, you know, a red sweet wine with some sparkling, uh, sparkling notes to it. Right. Um, I would say uh, try to find something that is yummy. Everyone loves yummy. And the great thing about wine is that your description for what you're feeling and sensing is always correct because it's your description. So whatever you think is yummy is, is, is yummy, a cashmere sweater, right? Think about a wine that is going to give you that cashmere sweater sensation, right? So that's kind of the long answer to number one. Um, number two is don't overthink it, you know, make make the night the experience that you're trying to create, have it be educational, right? If you're, if you're doing something for Valentine's Day uh, with your partner and you, wanna get a, and you wanna get a gift and you've always wanted to go to Portugal, go to your local wine shop or find this online 
and find something from Portugal. And when, when we either deliver that gift, gift wrapped, or you come pick it up, gift wrapped, uh, you bring it back and say, hey, tonight we're gonna learn about Portuguese wine. And I got this great like, you know, chorizo, we're gonna do this and make an experience. That could be a $12 experience, right? So that's the second part is just try something new and make it fun, educational. And that's gonna be an experience that you're gonna remember as opposed to just going to buy a bottle of Vuv Quick Cup, which we don't sell, so. That's a perfect answer. And and going back to the point about traveling, you don't even need to travel. Just go to the Urban Grape and travel there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. TJ Douglas of the Urban Grape, thank you so much for joining 10 Questions with NBC10 Boston. Thank you so much for this experience. Nice to see you.